at this point I'm thinking to myself I should stay away from all isolation exercises the reason why I say this is because bodybuilding powerlifting weightlifting they're completely different sports one concerns itself with the look and the other two are concerning themselves with the function I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself should I just do some real cheap quad work tonight before bed I can jump on my little leg extension and pump it out and whatever and so I walk over there and I start messing around laying there on the bench thinking once again I find myself on an anatomy chart and I'm looking and I'm looking and thinking and then it occurs to me why don't we sometimes feel direct carryover when we do something like a leg extension why don't we feel it why don't we feel the squat seem better after a few days you hit it hard you recover technically should be a little bit better in the squat and then it hit me one of the quadricep muscles is biarticulate so it crosses two joints the rectus femoris flexes the hip and extends the knee why is that important well, if you're just sitting in a, in, a, in a leg extension machine, sitting in it and pumping the quads, or you are sitting in a leg press, sitting in a leg press, and you're just repping it out. And both of those exercises, you're feeling really nice, bloody beautiful quad pump. but you're shooting yourself in the foot at the same time. You're building these nice quads and you're thinking to yourself, oh, these bad boys are going to carry over to the squad 100%. But what you're not considering is that while you are sitting and training your quads, you are shortening that rectus femoris and it's directly antagonizing your glutes they are opposite to the glutes the glutes want to extend the hip the rectus femoris wants to flex the hip and what are we trying to do in a squat we are trying to extend the knee and extend the hips so if your rectus femoris is real strong real strong in the leg press and leg extension you get into that squat, you push, that rectus femoris gets real tight, puts all of its power in. You start bending at the hip. You start good morning your squat. And you think to yourself, oh man, I've got weak quads. i got to hit more quads because I'm leaning over. I'm leaning over, man. Just leaning over. I need more quads. So you get back on the leg, leg, uh, leg press machine. You get back on the leg extension. You keep pumping and you keep bending over in the squat. Hell is going on here, man. Isolation exercises like that. I know the leg press is not really an isolation exercise, but it's a seated exercise. It's very dangerous because it removes a whole team of muscles out of movement. It is not natural for us to be sitting and pumping our legs because a squat is hip extension and leg extension, knee extension. You can't go without the extension bit of the hip. So we need to train our quads in a manner where we are engaging the glutes as well. So the rectus femoris learns, yeah, you take care of the knee and let the glutes take care of the hip. We can't be flexing at the hip, man, because the glutes are trying to extend the damn thing. We're trying to squat. We're trying to squat up, extend. This is why I think it is very, very important to make the distinction between aesthetics goals and functional performance goals. 
a good looking set of quads doesn't mean they're going to translate because if that quad is real short if you have trained that quad in a seated position you are inhibiting its effect in the squat because it is inhibiting the glutes and without the glutes you're not going to extend the hip and you're screwed so how do you how do you train the damn quad you can't train the quad without its glute partnership those two things must exist together this is why bodyweight squats this is why hindu squats this is why squatting in general is the best because both of these muscle groups are working together but if you remove the other right if you remove the other what are we doing man same thing same thing is when you're doing the hip thrust you are extending the hip without extending the knee when does that happen when does that happen you are programming the nervous system to shit itself. It's going to shit itself when you go back to the squat. What is going on here, man? What are we doing? You've just put me through a whole block of doing one or the other. We've never done it together, man. We've never extended both the knee and the hip at the same time. You're training the nervous system to behave in a manner, in a manner that you don't want it to behave. So what, we, what, what signals are we saying? And so when we are thinking about isolation exercise, bodybuilding, power building, be very, very careful what you're doing. Very careful. And you, there needs to be a very, very thought about process or how you're doing it. Of course, you could probably work around some of these complications with extension, uh, with um, leg extensions and leg pressing and whatever. Make sure you address the length part of some of these, you know, you can stretch your hip flexors, right? Straight after the leg, leg press and leg extension, you're going to a, a stretching routine. But why not just squat? Why not just squat? You have one exercise versus two exercises. This is what occurred to me as I was sitting there. I'm like, I don't know why, but this feels wrong. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting there on the leg extension machine. I'm like, like, why does this feel like it's not going to do shit for me? Okay, great pump. That's fantastic. But what are we doing here? I'm flexing the hell out of this muscle while I'm sitting, sitting, sitting. When am I going to be sitting, flexing my quads? Am I going to be doing that in the deadlift? In the squat? The glutes are being squashed. I'm sitting on my glutes. They're dead. They're squashed. So they're completely off and I'm pumping the hell out of my quads. <laughs> what are we doing, man? From a basketball sense, when I think about basketball and we're training a team, right? There's a point guy shooting guys small forward, power forward, center. It's like scrimmaging without the point guard or the center. It's just the two, three, and four men, they're just playing. We're just playing. How can you play? How can you run a set without the point guard or the center? The, half of the damn team is not there, man. What, what, what are we doing, man? How, we, what, what, is, how is that going to turn out in the game? There has to be synergy. And this is a term that, frankly, it's the most unsexiest thing in the world because we, you know, especially me, an extremist mindset, I always want to be like, nah, this is what you got to do. This is why I feel amazing jumping. Because what is jumping? It's everything. It's, an, it's a human movement. Leg extensions aren't. Leg press aren't. It's just the way it is, man. You, these things are not, you're not going to do that anywhere other than in those machines. When are you going to be completely dissected at the spinal cord? Like nothing is happening from the hips all the way to the head. Nothing is happening there. You're just leg pressing. Nothing else is going on. This imaginary weight is on your legs. Nothing else is working. And then you see oh, um, so many people. Man, they are hogging every 20 kilo plate in the gym. All the 20 kilo plates are with this guy on the leg press. But he can't squat shit. Why? Because he's not taught his body how to move in synergy. The quads are like, what are we doing here, man? You put the bar on the back, the glutes are weak, this collapse. This is why I think Louis Simmons, 
This is why Louis Simmons always talked about posterior chain. Always talked about posterior chain. Um, because you can squat with just a posterior chain, but you can't squat with just quads. It's impossible. You, no matter how much strong your quads are, if you push, you're going to just bend over. You're going to bend over. Those hip flexors are going to bend you forward as you're, as you're pushing with the quads. So if you think about what is a good morning squat, what is a good morning squat? What is a stripper squat? I don't know why it just occurred to me, and I could be wrong, and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. A good morning squat and a stripper squat is simply quads taking over, glutes failing for whatever reason. We've talked about one. And you just come, you just, you dump the bar because you're going to get bent over. This is how I'm thinking. Obviously, this is a very, very complex thing, and I've been back and forth many, many times. Weak glutes, weak posterior chain, weak quads, what's well, all this sort of stuff. I've been through the whole body a couple of times, but in this space of thinking about isolation exercises, I'm just wondering how effective they are. Is there a better time? Is there a better use of our time than sitting and training a body part, which will never behave like that in the real lift? Right? This is why, same thing, leg curls are also frowned upon. Why is that? When the hell are hamstrings working without the glutes? When? Explain to me when. You might come up with one freaking scenario, but the most scenarios are these things do not work in isolation. They just don't, man. The glutes and hamstrings are freaking team, man. You can't be working them out individually, man. It's unnatural. And, and, and the, you know, you can pump them out and build them or whatever. It's beautiful. But if you're concerning yourself with function, it's not going to work like that, man. It's just, it's simply not the way to go about it. So what do you do? What do you do? What's a cheap way of training these body parts? Which, whatever you decide, just make sure you are not isolating. So automatically we're talking about compound movements. We're talking about a squat or a lunge to train the both. That's the way. I'm sorry to say, man, but I've, I've, I've thought about this for a very long time. And I think the conclusion in my mind is, is that isolation shit doesn't work, man. It simply doesn't work. The symptoms you display upon failing a lift can be misleading as a motherfucker. You don't know what's going on. Are you bent over in the squat because you're trying to use the posterior chain more? Or are you bent over in the squat because your quads are taking over? The quads are taking over because they're also hip flexing. Think about how evil that is as a design. How evil is that? The very thing which is helping you extend one joint is flexing the next joint. So it's kind of like a tug of war, man. It's like, <laughs> how cruel is that, man? The quads are working so freaking hard to extend the knee. So you can, you know, do that portion of the, of, of, of the squat. And they're screwing up the bloke next door, the glutes. Inhibiting it. Inhibiting that guy. As he's trying to work his stuff out. So Marco Jordan goes for 100 points. And everyone else has got fat zeros. That's not sort a of winning formula, man. I don't know how many times I've seen NBA guys average 35. You know, that's not effective. That's not how you play basketball, man. You can't have a bloke on the, on the court. Not touch the ball for 10 minutes. He's not going to want to pass. He's not going to want to play defense. He's not, going to, he's not going to be in a good mood. He's not touched the ball. That's not a winning formula. A winning formula is when everyone gets a piece and the best player facilitates the game. Not just bloody T-sell it up. You know, just go around like Pac-Man taking every freaking shot. In my mind, it makes sense that there's a relationship between the quads and the glutes. 
they're not doing two different things. They're very much connected because of these biarticulate muscles. And there are many more in the body, mind you, which complicates the shit even further. It's not just about the quads. It's not. Last year I dedicated a lot of posterior chain stuff. This year I'm all about quads. And I've come to this realization that, yeah, okay, do whatever you want. But there needs to be a holistic approach to this stuff. You just can't hit one department and expect everything to work well. It does not work. Nature does not work in that extreme way. You need to be able to address it together. The glutes and quads need to flex at the same time. If you have perfect equal strength between these two muscle groups, you will have a fluid, beautiful looking squat. If there are discrepancies between the two, it's going to look ugly as all hell. I appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.